TC at Encino. My vehicle's 10 7. Shots fired, code 3 cover. S1 is down. Hello, I'm Escondido Police Chief Ed Barso. This critical incident community briefing is intended to provide you with information on an officer involved shooting that occurred on September 17th, 2021 in the city of Escondido. You are about to see relevant video footage, photographs, and learn other evidence so that you can have a better understanding of the incident based on what we know right now. Following an officer involved shooting, a detailed investigative process is immediately launched. An investigation is currently being conducted by the Escondido Police Department Crimes of Violence Unit. The investigative process includes an independent review by the San Diego County District Attorney's Office, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the FBI to determine if the officer's actions are reasonable under the law. The decision as to the legality of the shooting is rendered by the San Diego County District Attorney's Office. In general, that independent review and final determination takes at least 180 days. In accordance with state law, documents associated with this investigation will become available to the public once the investigation is complete. A word of caution. The images and information you are about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. Viewer discretion is advised especially for young children and sensitive viewers. On September 17th, 2021, at about 5 p.m., the Escondido Police Department received a 911 call from two victims who stated that a male in a Mercedes SUV shot at their vehicle near the Walmart in central Escondido. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Yeah, hello. Um, there is this guy with a white car in the Mercedes. Um, he, he was drinking and he had a, um, there's this dude that had a gun inside his car and he was drinking. Uh -huh. And we were, we were driving and he shot at the car. And where did this happen? And it happened in, um, next to Walmart, next to Walmart, but right now we're going to the hospital. Is the person that, is there somebody injured in your car? Yeah. Okay, which Walmart did it happen at? Um, Escondido. The, and so this person that shot at your car, did you know yeah, him? No, we don't know him. Okay. He shot, up the, he shot the car and he shot one of um, my sister's boyfriend in the back. Yeah, white Mercedes. A bullet traveled through their car and struck the driver once in the back. The victim drove himself to a hospital where he was treated and released. At this point, there is no known relationship between the suspect and victims, and no motive for the shooting has been determined. The victims provided a license plate of the suspect vehicle and a description of the shooter. At 6.12 p.m., officers spotted the white Mercedes SUV near the registered owner's residence. A pursuit ensued and reached speeds more than 100 miles per hour over a six mile route. The pursuit terminated when the suspect crashed near the intersection of Bear Valley Parkway and Encino Drive. 352, we're continuing southbound on Bear Valley, passing Boyle now, speeds 100. And then number two lane, if I can get a dog to try to catch up with you, number one. Looks like it's occupied times one, a lot of movement from the driver. I got the speed of 100, jump out. Now that I'm on the house. We're continuing down to the 78 now. Still number two lane, speed's 110. Got the 110. Just past the gate, continuing southbound. Speed's about 60 on my end. No traffic right now. Light traffic, speed to 
FTC at Encino. My vehicle's 10-7. Shots fired, code three cover, S1 is down. The suspect, Escondido resident Jonathan Charles Carroll, age 38, exited his vehicle with a handgun pointed at the officer. During a subsequent exchange of gunfire, Carroll fired two rounds and officer Chandler Hopple fired 12 rounds. The shooting transpired in just 3.27 seconds. TC at Encino, my vehicle's 10-7. Shots fired, code three cover, S1 is down. I am code four, Encino and Bear Valley. Suspect is down. Start medics. He was armed with a handgun. Go bother, go bother, go bother. John, you got it, you got it? I got hands, I got hands, I got hands. Wait, wait, for gloves? Yeah, wait for gloves, wait for gloves. Gloves on! Gloves on, gloves on! Hey, who's got the... Uh, hey, Brandon, you got 40? Yo, I'll go hands on. You want to go non-lethal? Less yeah. lethal? Go. Taser, taser, get taser. We're right here. We're good? All right, let's, let's go. Move up. The gun is right under his hand right here. Just get the gun out and leave him. He's dead. The gun is right under his hand right here. Just get the gun out and leave him. He's dead. Who's gonna? You got brain matter? You got one. See it, Encino. My vehicle's 10 7. Shots fired, code 3 cover. S1 is down. Carol was struck in the upper left arm abdomen, and the head. He was transported to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Carroll's weapon was an unserialized 9mm semi-automatic handgun, often referred to as a ghost gun. A search of his vehicle revealed another unserialized handgun, an unserialized AR-style rifle, and several hundred rounds of ammunition. As you just learned, Jonathan Carroll not only confronted Officer Hopple with a loaded handgun, but fired that weapon. 
We later discovered that Carroll's vehicle contained an additional handgun, an AR-15, and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. One of our most fundamental obligations is to stand between members of our community and those who intend to harm them. Officer Hoppel did just that, and I have little doubt that he prevented further harm to innocent members of our community. Thank you for taking the time to view this video.